The third antinomy of apocalyptic humanism is called anthropogonical theogony. Um, theogony is a term for um, God being born, the birth of God. Anthropogony is the term for man being born, for humanity being born. Both such ugly terms. <laughs> Anthropogony. Um, so, um, this topic addresses concerns the nature of history, of the direction of history. And this is something that um, I guess isn't always looked at squarely. That there seems to be some direction to things. Um, something about the way that the world is developing um, seems to suggest that um, history has a goal of some kind. It might not have a goal. I mean, you know, maybe what is happening in history right now just happens to be happening and there's no, like, um, end point. But that's a very difficult view to hold um, coherently. I mean, you, you ha you'd have to sort of do a lot of, like, um, if you're really thinking about history, it seems like it's been going in a direction towards, um, towards something better, uh, you know, or at least something more, um, more organized or more complex. And the antinomy addressed here is basically between whether it is just um, humanity that's being born in some sense or whether God himself is being born. So first let's consider the idea that humanity is being born. So what it looks like to me is that with every generation, what is emerging more and more is the ability of the individual to actualize itself, himself, herself, whatever gender you want to say. And, um, and one can imagine and hope for that to lead to a world, perhaps very soon, where um, where human beings are able to fully devote themselves to their individuation. Um, And, you know, the human psyche has a very deep structure. It's possible to make what I'm saying here sound kind of like um, superficial or facile, but, um, but it's not. Uh, it's not superficial at all. Uh, other, other views of what humans are, those are the superficial ones. Um, you know, human, human beings have this um, this drive in their core that is, you know, spectral and mysterious and it can either be activated or not. And when it's activated, um, and it's able to kind of be the cause of the activity in the life of the, of the person that, um, that generates a satisfaction that they, you know, won't get otherwise, 
and will have to you know seek uh, in backwards ways and other scenarios and um, and um, you know if civilization doesn't collapse w one can really imagine a world where um, that activity is the meaning of life and interactions between people are mostly oriented around sharing uh, sharing inspiration with one another by sort of showing each other what they've learned or created and helping each other to learn and create and um, and you know taking risks, making mistakes, learning from them, um, you know that 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 could be all of human life. So, um, anyway, that's um, that's the idea that man could be born. It, you know, and and that like civilization would serve that. Like the state would be kind of different. Uh, the economy would run, run on its own um, or like it would be run sort of you know by by people who enjoy that kind of thing um, but there just wouldn't be the uh, alienation that there is now and there wouldn't be the inequality that there is now or the needless suffering so um, a different view is that it is God that is being born. And, um, so this is kind of the difference between Christianity and Gnosticism, first of all. So, according to Christianity, um, God can't be lacking anything. And so... Uh, so if God needed to be born through human history, um, that would mean that God was lacking in some way, and then he wouldn't be God. Uh, so in terms of Christian dogma, you know, we have to choose the alternative that it is only man that is being born, it's not God being born. But there is a long-standing tradition of Gnosticism according to which uh, it is God that is being born. And um, uh, in, in, in a lot of Ger in German idealism you find this, in the work of Hegel and of Schelling, uh, and in more contemporary figures like Zizek and Deleuze. Um, you know, God isn't there on this other plane sort of watching us and loving us and looking down and beaming his love. Um, God uh, doesn't have a personality yet. You know, God, God isn't there. Um, and... Um, the 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 sort of pathos of human history is uncertain, and um, and when people talk about building AGI, uh, like Messieu talks about, you know that we can that God God could be born even though He doesn't exist yet, and so forth. Um, anyway, there's this other view. That it's God that's being born. So, I mean, I think it's not philosophically coherent, really. And it is, it goes against dogma. But, uh, um, but you can make a strong case for it. Uh, from the perspective of philosophy. And, um, in any case, you know, the point 
here is that we don't know um, we don't know but so uh, I guess an important point is that if God is being born um, you know that that's not as positive of a future for humanity because um, you know that that probably would end up with a situation more like a multicellular organism forming uh, out of a bunch of single-celled organisms, and those single-celled organisms, you know, they don't, their lives have not improved. Like they, they don't, they don't know what's happening. They don't know about the multicellular organism that they have come to comprise, and um, and. Uh, you know, someone like Nietzsche is very explicit in um, imagining that that is the outcome. You know, that, that the Ubermensch is sort of on this higher horizon that just isn't even intelligible to us. Um, so, you know, it may kill us all or it may just, um, you know, be a, be a vessel that makes use of us in some way. Maybe it doesn't even really know about us, uh, but it's just sort of a new, um, you know, a phase transition, a, a, a new phase. The same way that that a multicellular organism doesn't necessarily register its cells or really know about them. It's just sort of comprised of them. Um, So that's a bit of a colder outlook, but um, anyway, that's the basic idea that that this this topic is something that is worth savoring, worth exploring, worth thinking about, and um, and that like in either case, like you know what's going on right now, it's not just like random, uh, you know, it's not like things wouldn't have been better if history weren't happening um the world is very bad the world was very bad before too um it, it, it always kind of depends who you are and um and i think that's kind of the the importance of this antinomy in a way is to not is that it's good to be thinking about these options and not kind of fantasizing that like either, you know, early modern European civilization was better than what we have now or that like uh, any indigenous civilization was better than what we have now. You know, you know, in some ways, maybe some of them were better, some were worse, you know, some some indigenous civilizations were probably great some were not great uh i you know some probably were great for a time and then stopped being great you know like uh there's no like um it's important to break the fantasy that there is a pre-constituted reality that we already know about that would be better to arrive at. That doesn't exist, but um, but it is possible that there could be a reality that is better than any reality that we've ever known, um, and that we could strive to create that.